VR, virtual reality. You see, our lives are sometimes boring. We just feel that time doesn't move fast enough, or sometimes we feel that time moves way too fast. We want to be able to do great things, travel around the world, do spacewalks from the ISS, or maybe even travel aboard an actual advanced spacecraft and explore our Milky Way galaxy at a speed of light. All these are things that we dream of, but there are also things that 99.9% .9 of us will never get a chance to do. But what if I told you that there is a way? There is a way to actually do all of that and even more. And this sounds as if I'm gonna sell you an illegal substance, but I promise you that's not the case. And the way to do all of this is by using one of these. So this is a VR or virtual reality headset. So you put this on your head and you get fully transported into a virtual world. And you can pretty much do anything that you can imagine. Now, there are many, many VR headsets on the market right now, but this one, this one is pretty special. This is the Oculus Quest, and this is the first real VR that does not have a cable at all. <laughs> Normally, uh, you have a VR headset that you connect to your PC or your gaming console, but this one is truly wireless, and it also supports 3D tracking, so you can actually move around in your room. Uh, and you can also see your hands, as well as also track your hands when you close your fingers and more. So this thing is pretty amazing. And this video is not sponsored by Oculus, by the way. I think this is probably the only Oculus Quest review that is not sponsored by Oculus, but I did it send over a unit, but I also purchased one myself. So yeah, here's the full unbiased review of the Oculus Quest after two plus months of use. I was really interested in this device uh, even before it came out. So uh, yeah, finally got it. Two months, two plus months of use. Here's everything you need to know. Full unbiased review. If you want to support a channel when shopping through Amazon, please do consider using the links below. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but Amazon does give us a small commission from their sales, which helps us make even more in-depth videos like this one and even better quality. So, thank you. Okay, so I believe that every VR headset has seven important features that it needs to nail. And those features are one, resolution, two, the graphics, three, comfortability, four, the actual tracking, five, the controllers, six, the number and the type of games that you can find, and seven, the battery life, which mostly just applies to wireless headsets, such as the Oculus Quest. And before starting this review, I just want to mention the other VR systems that I've used so that you know where I'm coming from. So I've used the Oculus Rift DevKit 1 right when it was introduced for about one hour. So yes, I haven't really got a chance to spend a lot of time with that. Then I've used the Oculus Rift DevKit 2 when that one came out, and I've used that for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, so again, not for that long. I've then used the PSVR for eight plus months, a Samsung Gear VR first, second, and third generation with very Samsung phones over the years, and then I've also used Google's own Daydream VR for about a month, and of course the popular Google Cardboard. And I've used that one for about 30 minutes or so back when it came out, so uh, the majority of my VR experiences come from mobile VR and the PlayStation VR, with me just trying out the development kits of the Oculus Rift. So starting off with section number one, we have the resolution. So the Oculus Quest has a resolution of 1440 by 1600 per each eye, which is quite a lot. So the original Rift, for example, had uh, 1080 by 1200 per eye, so this is higher than that. Then this is also higher than the newly released Rift S, which has 1280 by 1440 pixels per each eye, and this is also significantly higher than the 960 by 1080 that a PSVR has per eye. In fact, the Oculus Quest has an even higher resolution than the much more expensive HTC Vive, and it has the exact same resolution as the Valve Index VR, which is pretty much the best VR headset that money can buy right now. So yes, the Quest has the highest resolution display on any well-known VR system. There are a few Chinese ones that have 5K or 8K displays, but those are mostly just for watching movies. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, coming from the PSVR, I can definitely notice a significant increase in resolution. So you can still see the pixels on this, by the way. Uh, you would need something like a 16K display per eye in order for not to be able to see the pixels at all. Uh, but this is already a major improvement from the PSVR. However, if that sounds way too good to be true, it's because it probably is. So, section number two, let's talk about the actual graphics. Even though we get such a high resolution display, uh, the Oculus Quest has to run the graphics internally. And since it uses a Snapdragon 835 processor, yes, not the 865 that's launching out this year, or the 855 Plus, or the 855, or the 845, 
but yes, the 835 from 2017. The same processor that you would find in a Samsung Galaxy S8 from more than two years ago. And here's the thing, the Galaxy S8 wasn't a powerful phone in the first place. I mean, performance-wise, the 835 is even weaker single-core-wise than an iPhone 6S from 2015, four years ago. And GPU-wise, it is just barely, barely more powerful, again, than the iPhone 6S from 2015. Not only that, but the Quest has four gigabytes of RAM, pretty much the same as you would find in low to mid-range smartphones today. The Galaxy S10 or the OnePlus 7 Pro, for example, can have up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, which is three times as much as the Quest can. So performance-wise, this headset is very, very underpowered. But wait, there's more. This severely underpowered A35 CPU inside uh, not only has to run the game at 72 frames per second because 72 hertz is what this headset supports, but it also has to do all the tracking of your hands and the environment in real time. So games don't even get full access to the full power of this very weak CPU. And because of that, games never actually run at full resolution. Instead, they run at maybe 1080p uh, or even lower in some cases. And because of that, it doesn't really matter that you have such a high resolution display when the image that's displayed on this would be much lower resolution. So the Quest is like having a 4K display, but playing the games in 720p. Still, games such as Beat Saber, Creed or Super Hot VR actually look sharper on the Quest than on the PSVR. Sharper, but the graphics are not that great. So, for example, in Beat Saber, literally my favorite VR game of all time, it's, it's honestly great, uh, there are no reflections on the walls, there are less sparks when cubes are cut, and the whole thing looks like a mobile game than a PC game. A good way to put all this is, imagine the Quest as having a 4K display playing in a 720p but on low while something like a PSVR has a 1080p display and you're playing in 1080p on epic settings. Also, something that I want to address is the frame rate. So the Quest has a refresh rate of 72Hz, which means that the maximum frame rate that you can get from games is 72 frames per second. Now, for proper VR, you need at least 90 frames per second, so this is why most VR headsets are even pushing for well over 90Hz now. The PSVR, for example, can do 120Hz, so yeah, you get almost double the frame rate with a PSVR. However, while I was expecting the Quest to be a very laggy experience with, you know, a lot of motion sickness because of the lower frame rate, uh, that was definitely not the case. In fact, in most games, I couldn't even tell that the Quest had a much lower refresh rate when compared to the PSVR. Uh, in Beat Saber, for example, playing on easy, normal, and even hard was perfectly fine. Uh, the only time when I've actually noticed the frame rate was when I was playing on Experts. Sometimes it would lag, but only slightly. It maybe dropped a frame or two. Uh, that was uh, quite a bit noticeable, but other than that, I'm I'm quite impressed. But what sorcery is this? How does the Quest do all of this? How can it render the games in 1080p or even higher while keeping the frame rate at 72 frames per second and also mapping your room in 3D and tracking your controllers in real time with that heavily underpowered Snapdragon 835 processor? Well, there are two reasons. First one is called optimization, so all the games are really, really optimized for the Quest. And then the second one is fan. Fan? Yeah, the Quest actually has a lot of thermal paste on the CPU, it also has two individual heat pipes as well as an actual active fan in order to keep the processor cooled, because yes, this thing is actually overclocked. And that overclock is how this CPU manages to handle all of this. But you know, a good VR headset needs to be comfortable as well. So how comfortable is the Quest? Well, the PSVR has that ring that attaches to your head, and the VR itself just floats right above your face, so it doesn't really touch it at all, which means that the PSVR is extremely, extremely comfortable. In fact, everyone that has used the PSVR and also any other uh, VR headsets, they agree that the PSVR is the most comfortable VR headset on the market right now. So, coming from that PSVR experience to the Quest was an um, awful experience. <laughs> yes, the Quest is by far the most uncomfortable VR headset that I've ever used. I'm not even exaggerating. Uh, it is very, very front heavy. So you constantly have to adjust it uh, after just five minutes or so. So it's pretty bad. It only has uh, this Velcro strap, which is extremely basic. It doesn't even go up until the bottom of your head, by the way. Um, anyway, there are a few mods and accessories that you can buy to make this a bit more comfortable if you wish. So you can buy something like an HTC Vive Pro attachment and install that if you want to be a bit more creative so I need to uh, do a few more things to get it working. Uh, I left a video of someone who actually did that in the description box down below, by the way. But Oculus does not sell any first-party accessory to make this more comfortable, unfortunately. Uh, which is a shame because I honestly believe that this is the worst thing about the Quest. It's not a graphics or the frame rate, it's how unpleasant this thing is to wear. And that's really bad to say about, you know, a VR headset that you're supposed to use for, I don't know, at least 30 minutes, or if not even a few hours for some people. So, yeah.
Oculus, please release something because this thing is very, very, very uncomfortable. Now, aside from the resolution, the graphics and the comfortability, another very important part of any VR headset is just how good the tracking is. And I'm very glad to say that the tracking on the Quest is just outstanding. So it uses four cameras, two in the top corners and two in the bottom corners of the headsets, and this is how it maps your room in 3D. And probably my favorite part about this is that every time you put a Quest on, it will actually enter this guardian mode where you can see what's happening in the outside world, and then you can draw an outline on the floor on where you want the play area to be. The idea here is that if you step near the virtual walls that you created, you'll get a warning. And if you put your head through the wall, you can actually see the real world. So this is amazing. This is, this is something that no other VR headset does, uh, and this is, this is probably my favorite feature about the Quest. This way, I'm always feeling safe inside VR. I know that I won't be able to hit a piece of furniture or walk into a wall because I'll get that warning and I can actually see the virtual walls when they come close. So yeah, this is a great, great feature. However, you do need to have a fairly generous space to play in. So for example, my Quest actually told me that my living room was way too small, even though my PSVR didn't have any problems with it at all. So in my case, I ended up triggering the virtual walls whenever I was playing Beat Saber. So I had to disable the Guardian system in the end just because it it was getting quite annoying and distracting. You can do that, by the way, by enabling developer mode in the Oculus app on your smartphone. Now, when it comes to the tracking on the controllers, the new Oculus Touch controllers have this ring facing you now, uh, and that one contains the infrared transmitters that the cameras on the Oculus Quest pick up. And these worked extremely, extremely well, especially after that July 2019 update. Now, unfortunately, the tracking does not work in a very bright environment, so you would not be able to use this outdoors, uh, and it also does not work in a very dark environment environment either, so you need to be in a dimly lit room in order for this to work. Now, the PSVR, on the other hand, actually does work in complete darkness, which is a pretty good advantage to the PSVR. But overall, the tracking is indeed better than on the PSVR. Again, especially after that big July 2019 update. Uh, in Beat Saber on Expert, the tracking lost about 2-4 blocks per song, compared to maybe 5-6 to six on the PSVR. Now, in terms of the actual controllers and not the tracking, uh, these are pretty good. They both have a joystick as well as two buttons, X, Y, and A and Z. And you also have two triggers, so one on the back and then one on the side. So you actually have the full experience that you would get on a console controller. And probably the best part about them is that uh, all the buttons on the controller are actually capacitive as well. So if you touch the buttons without even pressing them, this would register as your finger being closed. So really, really cool stuff. So grabbing objects in games is extremely intuitive with this controller. So okay, what I dislike about these controllers? Well, they're quite on the small side, so if you're coming from the PSVR, they're not that easy to grip. So in Beat Saber, for example, they do not feel like swords, like the PSVR uh, Move controllers do. Instead, they feel like gloves or small, really small objects that you hold in your hand. They're also very, very light, and the vibration motor inside of them is quite weak. And the battery door kept coming off when playing Beat Saber, which was quite annoying. So yeah, even though uh, the tracking is very good on these, in Beat Saber, these are not the best controllers. The PS Move controllers are much better for Beat Saber. So what I've done is that I've actually bought these extensions for the controllers, which work amazing. So they make the controllers feel almost as good as the PS Move ones, so they make them feel heavier, uh, the, the sabers are actually longer, and the vibrations, they do feel stronger as well. So links for these in the description box down below in case you're interested. Okay, so having covered all of these sections, how do those features integrate into the actual gaming experience. So I played a few games on this, obviously Beat Saber, which was my favorite, uh, but also Creed, Super Hot VR, Star Wars Vader Immortal, Google Tilbrush, and wow, I'm extremely, extremely impressed. You put the Oculus Quest on and it instantly turns on. Uh, and if you're previously in a game, it would instantly bring you back into that game. So this is, this is amazing. There is zero wait time here. You can just jump right into VR whenever you want. And even though I do not endorse unlicensed songs, uh, Beat Saber does actually support custom songs and mods on the Quest. You just need to download an app called SideQuest, uh, connect your Oculus Quest to your computer, and uh, yeah, you can do it from there. So it's perfectly doable, you can have any songs you want and play them on the Quest, which is awesome. You cannot do that on the PSVR. Now, there aren't that many games for this as of yet, so there are about 30 or 40 games, but that list is constantly growing. Also, I was surprised to see how little storage the games actually occupied. So uh, I got a 64 gigabyte model for myself, and that's also the one that Oculus has sent over. Uh, but after installing about 10 or so apps and games, I still had more than 40 gigabytes left. In fact, most games and apps actually take less than 500 megabytes. So in case you're thinking about that uh, 128 gigabyte model, 
don't buy it unless you'll also be using it to store a ton of movies. And something quite cool about a Quest is that you can also stream whatever you see to a TV, smartphone, or a tablet. Now, by default, you can do this in the app on the device that you've, you know, set it up on. Uh, and this is how you can also show it to your friends what you're doing in VR. Unfortunately, there is no sound if you do it like this. But if you do have a Google Chromecast, you can also stream it directly to your TV. And that way, you do get sound. Uh, unfortunately, the signal was extremely, extremely poor in my case. It constantly dropped out. But hey, at least, you know, it's doable to some extent. And speaking of the sound, the Quest does have some built-in speakers, which are, again, doable. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't use them for Beat Saber, uh, but for general sound effects and navigation and stuff like that, maybe even Google Tilt Brush, they're fine. Now the Quest does have two headphone jacks, one on each side, and you can actually buy Oculus's first party headphones, but I couldn't find them in stock anywhere. Uh, so you can actually use your own headphones if you want, and they work well, it's just that you will have that annoying cable in between and that would get in the way. Now something that I've personally noticed is that the lenses on my Quest, they were quite blurry. Even after cleaning them, they were still the same. And I've noticed this on both my Quest and the one that Oculus has sent over. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is either a widespread issue or this is just how the lenses on the Quest are. But yes, they are quite a bit blurry and they have a lot of reflections even when uh, there was just a tiny bit of light. So yeah, something that I've never had an issue with with my PSVR or even my Samsung Gear VR headsets. And finally, when it comes to the battery life, I get about two hours of gameplay out of this. It does depend on the game um, that you play, but about two to three hours is what you should expect. I do like the fact that the charging cable is long enough for you to use the Quest while it is charging, but I do not like the fact that the controllers do not have a charging port. Instead, you have to use AA batteries, which is quite inconvenient. Everything should be rechargeable in 2019. Also, Oculus did tell me that the 128GB model is also heavier due to a larger battery. Now, personally, I haven't been able to verify this anywhere. Uh, so, from my knowledge, both the 64GB and the 128GB models have the exact same battery. Okay, so in the end, is the Oculus Quest worth it? And honestly, yes. It actually is, um, definitely. If you don't have a VR, then this is the best all around VR headset in my opinion. And even if you do have a VR, you should still try one because the joy of not having a cable in between anchoring you down is just incredible. And yes, while the graphics are not as good as on the PSVR or any desktop VR for that matter, they are good enough and the fact that you, you can put this thing on and you're instantly into a game is something that you don't have on any other VR system right now. I just hope that Oculus releases a Quest Pro in the near future with a much more powerful processor, uh, at least the 855, if not even the 865, and a better head strap because those are my main two complaints. But yeah, other than that, the Quest is a console category of uh, its own, essentially. So if you haven't upgraded to the Xbox One X or the PS4 Pro, then this is actually a much better option than those because this is something completely, completely different. And I'm really looking forward to the future of VR. But yeah, there you go. If you want to get one, uh, please use the link below. Uh, you're also supporting the channel by using those links and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and definitely just subscribe notifications if you want to see more in-depth reviews like this one. This one took quite some time to make, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the Oculus Quest uh, and the future of VR. But yeah, thank you for watching. Again, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So enough tech, signing out. Cheers.